Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim. Today, we will discuss anticoagulation therapy for venous thromboembolism with a case presentation. A 45-year-old man developed dyspnea and chest pain the day after a long flight from London. CT angiogram of the chest showed a thrombus in the segmental pulmonary artery in the right lower lung. Ultrasound of the leg in an attempt to find its origin revealed deep vein thrombosis in the left femoral vein. Questions. How do you treat this patient? Which anticoagulants do you use? Of course, with the anticoagulants, what kind of anticoagulants do we have to treat him? Unfractionated heparin. How does it work? Thrombin is a potent coagulation factor 2A, but blocked by antithrombin. We used to call it antithrombin 3. The antithrombin inhibits factor 9, 10, and uh, thrombin. Unfractionated heparin is a large polysaccharides obtained from pigs, uh, which binds antithrombin and enhances its antithrombin effect by thousand times. Low molecular weight heparin is a, uh, a fractionated porcine heparin having much smaller polysaccharides unit, usually less than 18. Uh, binding to antithrombin causes confirmation or change of antithrombin that allows inhibiting factor 10A only, not the thrombin. There are several uh, commercially available drugs. Enoxaparin, uh, the commercial name is Levanox, Daltaparin, uh, Fragmin. Both unfractionated heparin and low molecular heparin can cause heparin induced thrombocytopenia by the IgG antibody against heparin and the platelet factor 4 uh, complex. But it mainly occurs with the unfractionated heparin very rare with a low molecular weight heparin. Fondaparinox is a synthetic polysaccharide having similar structure and function of low molecular heparin, but it causes no heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. Probably it's a synthetic. Warfarin is a vitamin K inhibitor. Vitamin K carboxylates the glutamate residue of factors 2, 7, 9, 10, and the protein CNS. Warfarin inhibits vitamin K, thus inhibiting factors 2, 7, 9, 10, and the protein CNS. Direct oral anticoagulants have two kinds. Uh, first, direct factor 10A inhibitors, and the other direct thrombin inhibitor. Direct factor 10A inhibitors has, uh, have several drugs. Rivaroxaban, the trade name is uh, Zeralto. Apixaban, uh, Eloquiz. Edoxaban, Savea. The uh, factor 10A inhibitors, the, their names ends Saban, Epic Saban, Edox Saban, because XA means factor 10A, and the ban means uh, banning, inhibiting. Direct thrombin inhibitor uh, has a commercially available drugs by the name of Dabigatren. Dabigatren's uh, trade name is uh, uh, Pridoxa. Argatroban is a direct thrombin inhibitor as well, but it's used for uh, thromb uh, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia uh, because it's given uh, by IV, so it's not suitable for long-term use. Let's review the coagulation cascade to better understand where those anticoagulants work. When vascular injury occurs, tissue vector will be released to activate vector 7. Vector 7A will activate vector 10. Vector 10A, with the help of vector 5, converts the prothrombin to thrombin, and the thrombin will convert fibrinogen to fibrin. Vector 13 will cross-link the fibrin to strengthen the uh, clot. The thrombin uh, released from an extrinsic pathway goes all the way to the intrinsic pathway, activating vector 11. Vector 11 activates vector 9, and the, with the help of vector 8, uh, factor 10 will be activated and goes on and on again. Fact, uh, the thrombin also activate factor 13, uh, factor 8, 5, and uh, 13. On the other hand, factor 12 will be activated by contacting the damaged surface or activate platelet membrane, and again activate factor 11, 9, 8, 10, goes on and on again. And the antithrombin will inhibit the thrombin, uh, 
especially of the heparin, will enhance this antithrombin effect by a thousand times. As antithrombin also inhibit factor 10A, heparin will uh, inhibit both 10A and the thrombin. But low molecular weight heparin will only inhibit factor 10A because by binding antithrombin, antithrombin made a, a conformational change which only inhibits factor 10A. Now, the uh, warfarin inhibits vitamin K, which carboxylate the uh, factors 7, 2, 7, 9, 10, and protein CNS. And the protein C will be activated to inhibit factor 5 and 8. So protein C uh, needs protein S to be activated. So protein C and S are anticoagulants. Rivaroxaban, apixaban, and oxaban are direct factor 10A inhibitor and the dabigatran agatrovens direct thrombin inhibitor. And the cross-linked fibrin will be uh, degraded to fibrin degradation product and D-dimer by plasmin, which is activated from plasminogen by tissue plasminogen activator. Uh, how will you use these anticoagulants? Uh, because warfarin takes at least several days to work, you have to start with a heparin or low molecular weight heparin. And it has to be uh, uh, combined with the uh, warfarin for at least four or five days uh, for full anticoagulation. Heparin is PTT with or without anti 10A activity for monitoring. Warfarin is PT and INR for monitoring. INR is developed to standardize the PT value that varies depending on its test re reagents. Low molecular weight heparin inhibits factor 10A only as we studied. And this uh, anticoagulation effect is very reliable, so no monitoring is necessary. But if you really need to monitor, you can use anti 10A activity. It's given as a sub Q, so the patients can be treated as an outpatient as long as the blood pressure is not low. During pregnancy, the treatment, treatment choice is low molecular weight heparin because warfarin crosses the placenta barrier and causes congenital anomalies such as low nasal bridge or short fingers. Heparin and uh, low molecular weight heparin both can, both doesn't cross the placenta, so can be used during pregnancy, but heparin causes osteoporosis, not the low molecular weight heparin, very rare. Heparin has an antidote by the name of protamine sulfate, but protamine sulfate can't reverse the anticoagulation effect of low molecular weight heparin. Direct factor 10A inhibitors, rivaroxaban, apixaban, adoxaban, can start as primary treatment without heparin or low molecular weight heparin because it, is, it works right away and uh, it works for a long time. There is no need of frequent monitoring, no food interaction, and also, it has a low risk of intracranial bleeding compared with the uh, warfarin therapy. But disadvantages uh, for patients with renal function, we really can't use it. Also, the people have a very heavy weight. We don't know the exact dosage of those to use. It also has no specific antidotes. Direct thrombin inhibitor, dabigatran, has a similar characteristics of direct factor 10A inhibitors, but unlike factor 10A inhibitor, antidote is available. Its name is Ida Rucizumab. I usually uh, think about Ida or Verdi Opera, although the spelling is different. Ida uh, is the antidote for dabigatran, the direct thrombin inhibitor. Agatrobin is a direct uh, thrombin inhibitor by used for the uh, heparin-induced uh, uh, thrombocytopenia. So, in summary, anticoagulants having specific antidotes, heparin, protamine sulfate, not the low molecular weight heparin, warfarin, vitamin K. But in case of emergency, patients coming with a bleeding, you can't use the uh, vitamin K because it takes several days, several hours to work. So you have to use the fresh frozen plasma or pro, uh, prothrombin concentrate. Dabigatran has an Ida rubicizumab as an antidote. Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia is kind of dangerous thrombotic condition. The heparin injected to the patients binds the uh, platelet factor 4 in the bloodstream, forming platelet factor 4 heparin complex. 
then the patients develop IgG antibodies against the platelet factor 4 and heparin complex, which takes at least five days to develop. Then the IgG, along with the platelet factor 4 and heparin complex, attach to the platelets, activating the platelets, resulting in thrombosis and the thrombocytopenia. There is a test called uh, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia antibody immunoassay, but it gives the very high false rate, so it can't be the uh, diagnostic test. It's due to this uh, antibody cross-react with other heparin-induced antibodies. So the functional assay is required to uh, uh, make a diagnosis, it's just like the serotonin release assay. This condition uh, is related to both venous and arterial thromboembolism. It can cause DVT, pulmonary embolism, myocardial infarction, stroke, and gangrene. Develop in 30% of H uh, heparin-induced thrombosis patients, and the 10% of them need the amputation of, of limbs. It has high mortality rate up to 20%. It occurs in 2% of unfractionate heparin uh, treatment, but it's rare with the uh, low molecular weight heparin occurring just about 0.2%. But as we studied, it doesn't occur with the von the Perinox because it's a synthetic uh, uh, anticoagulants. It's more common in women and uh, with the open heart surgery. There are important characteristics. The thrombocytopenia is usually mild to moderate. The platelet counts usually don't drop more than 50% of its uh, original base level. And the timing is also important. It occurs 5 to 14 days after the first heparin therapy, but patients who already received heparin in the past, it can develop in 24 hours. The thrombosis also involves both vein and the artery. artery. Among factors inhibited by warfarin, factor 7 has the shortest half-life of two to six hours, followed by protein C, seven hours, and the fibrinogen has the longest half hour, 60 hours. So the PT may have been prolonged due to initial factor seven inhibition after warfarin therapy. It takes four to four to five days for patients to be fully anticoagulated because of long uh, half-life of fibrinogen. During this time frame, warfarin causes protein C deficiency as warfarin uh, inhibits protein C at the same time. So heparin or low molecular weight heparin must be given just a few hours or six to 12 hours before warfarin started to prevent this protein C deficiency. And the uh, warfarin skin necrosis also uh, uh, from the protein C deficiency. So it can occur at those time frame like a three to five days after the uh, warfarin started. It, uh, cause the uh, subcutaneous vascular thrombosis usually occurring in, uh, occurs in breast and the legs. Warfarin has interaction with foods and drugs. Vitamin K rich green veggies weaken the uh, warfarin. Raw spectrum antibiotics kill gut bacteria causing reduced vitamin K production and it potentiates the warfarin anticoagulation effect increasing PT and the bleeding risk. Other drugs potentially warfarin include antifungal, anti-tuberculosis, rifampin, and uh, heart medicine for atrial fibrillation, amiodarone, H2 blocker, anti-acetaminophen, but not the ranitidine, and the acetaminophen also prolong the uh, PT and the uh, bleeding risk. Concomitant use of platelet function inhibitors such as aspirin, ibuprofen, or direct oral anticoagulants can increase the bleeding risk and the bleeding time, but it doesn't increase the PT. Drug weakens the warfarin by inducing P40 enzyme uh, system is anti-epileptics, phenidoin and the carbamazepine. So warfarin is cleared very quickly uh, by this enzyme system. But when the epileptic patients stop taking this drug, suddenly while they are on warfarin, warfarin level goes up and increasing uh, PT and the bleeding risk.